Let's cover the economy first. Uh, they keep saying it's the end of the recession, everything's fine. 558,000 people lost their job in the last month. The job losses are accelerating. The restaurants are closing. The factories, the, the uh, industries. I wish things were getting better. But all the real indicators of Main Street, unless I'm wrong, Bob, show an implosion. But then they are taking their 27, their, their 23.7, and that's a month old number. We'll get new numbers in the next month. 23.7 trillion, almost double the GDP stolen in 10 months. They are pumping it in, but they admit that's mainly institutional buyers of those stocks and bonds. They're buying up infrastructure. The banks aren't lending. The Federal Reserve is paying to not lend. The dollar's going down. Gold's going up. Are we going to see another run-up in commodities like we saw a year and a half ago? Bob Chapman, are these green shoots, or what's really happening? You could poison ivy. <laughs> but listen, um, if everything was so hunky-dory, why have three top officials, uh, uh, top people, we'll say, in economics come out and said, I, I think we might need another stimulus here. Like I projected last January, I talked in terms of $2 trillion. And now even Joe Stiglitz has come out, and he's at Harvard, and he's an eminent World Bank economist. <clears throat> and he says, yeah, we need one of these. We've got to give Keynesianism a chance. What he's saying is, uh, I don't think the first go-around was allocated properly uh, in the right places at the right time. The people who got the checks, they went out and paid all their bills with them instead of spending them. Uh, they got a lot of uh, what's involved in the stimulus package is a lot of tax breaks. It takes too long for them to come down the pike. And so he's talking in terms like others are in the administration. They're getting the ball rolling. By the end of the year, they'll be looking for that $2 trillion so that this thing doesn't go under. But I think the big, the big story here that nobody has talked about, and that's usually the case, when I start spouting off about what's going on, there's something hidden here that people don't understand. <clears throat> and I'm going to make it as simple as possible. It was recently that the Federal Reserve, again, created $500 billion out of nothing. They lent that or exchanged that with five other major central banks and received currencies for that. And they received dollars. <clears throat> they use those currencies to go into the foreign exchange market to push, while well, they sell those foreign currencies, to push those currencies down so that the dollar will go up. And that's what that's for. But they're doing something else. They are having those central banks take those dollars that they have and go into the treasury auction market and buy U.S. treasury bills, notes, and bonds. So that's monetizing the debt, that. but they're doing it by laundering it through foreign banks. Exactly. Now, let me give you some statistics. I'm writing a piece on China, and the Chinese, it looks like they've sold off about $600 billion with a dollar-denominated assets, taking their dollar-denominated assets down to $1.1 trillion. Now, they have not been buying treasuries. And so there's an absence of buying of $500 billion to a trillion dollars. So we'll, we'll say $700 billion. So if you take it both ways, you've got a sale of 600 and a non-buy of 700 That's $1.3 trillion that was either sold or didn't participate. And somebody's got to come up with that money. Uh, foreign central banks of some kind, and they're not coming up with it. They're buying, but they're not buying enough. So the difference that they're not buying, the Fed's buying, and they're creating the money to do so through the foreign central banks, and they're trying to befuddle everybody. And when foreigners find out what they're doing secretly, they're going to freak out because they're holding 64.5% of the forex exchange that they have, foreign exchange that they have, in dollars. So if the dollar goes down because of what the Fed's doing behind the scenes, they're going to be very unhappy about that. But and the Fed I, I is also the, 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 it's also devaluing their currency, so everybody's sinking so that it's not as noticeable, and then all of the assets are going to the elites. And 
That's correct. And, you know, the Chinese could be out of the dollar in a year, maybe a year and a half, dependent. And that's why, that's a big reason why the dollar is going to get out and test 71.18. It's now around 78 and a half or so. And I think when it tests, it, it may well break through to the downside. And the reason I say that is all these other nations who have been holding on, they're going to say, hey, we've been taken. Now, how long that's going to take, I don't know. It could take six months. It could take two and a half years. I don't know. We don't know what the reaction of these governments is going to be because don't forget that when they don't do what Washington tells them, uh, Washington tells them, do you want your country invaded? I mean, do you want your Internet and uh, banking services cut off? Uh, do you want your postal from the United States cut off? Uh, your planes can't land in our country. Um, and, and this is true. They do this because I've been told by ex-heads of state that they actually do this. So this is where this is all leading. And the, the dollar going down is a lead pipe cinch. How is it going for them? Are things going well in your expert opinion? I think they're not going well for them, and that was pointed out in Greece at the Bilderberger Conference. And what, they, what they're trying to do, I think, is pull this thing back and stop it. And I think it's way beyond their ability to stop this destruction economically and financially of not only the United States but the world. And I really think that that's what they're trying to do in here, and that's what I think they agreed on. And I don't think it's possible. And they're going to have to live with it. And if it doesn't work out for them, what's going to happen is the public is going to say, all right, who did this to us? They're going to line them up in court, and they're going to put them in jail, and they're going to take their wealth away from them if they're lucky. If we have a repeat of the French Revolution, uh, I don't think it's going to be very nice. And I agree that people are so angry and so awake that that's probably going to blow up. And But I don't see the, 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 the hubris-filled establishment backing off. So I see this playing out with a lot of fireworks. And I agree with you, the evidence of Geithner chewing the carpet, blowing up, screaming at Bernanke, other evidence coming out shows that all is not well in Camelot uh, and that uh, the pit they dug for us is going to enfold them. And lastly, it's clear, and now they're even starting to admit this, that they're creating a depression on Main Street as they pump out all these fiat dollars to pay off their derivatives debts and that they're paying banks not to loan because if a bank's did loan, we'd have inflation. So instead, you, you literally have the elite being able to buy everything up. We pay the interest on giving them the money, and then we get to live in a depression. What they're doing financially and economically is blowing up on them. Uh, I figure that by the Chinese selling U.S. dollar-denominated assets and not buying U.S. denominated assets has had to have made the Fed secretly this year purchase somewhere between $500 billion and $800 billion worth of Treasury and, um, and uh, GSE paper, which is Fannie, Freddie, and Ginny, and, uh, and uh, that's what they're up to. Well, no, they and, admitted to Congress they've bought it, but they wouldn't say how much. No, that was another program that was uh, announced. That program there, this is beside that program. Oh. Uh, that program there was $300 billion in Treasuries. Six hundred billion in, in, in GSEs and one point two trillion in CDOs. Yeah, and then I saw Bernanke. Obligations. Then I saw Bernanke at a town hall meeting say he's not monetizing. I mean, that's like him going on TV and saying dollars aren't green. Well, it, they all lie. It, it's uh, part of the sociopathic and psychopathic uh, mind trail of what we're dealing with here. I mean, we're, we're dealing with a bunch of Caligulas, hundreds of them. I mean, these people are really insane. 